If you tell the police I have threatened you or your family, where's the proof? It sounds so ridiculous that no one will even try to stop me. <laughs> Welcome back to another thrilling edition of Gary Stalker The Full Story. Before we begin today, I'd like to remind you that the purpose of this content is to spread awareness of the dangers that lurk online. I recently received a message from someone thanking me for doing this series. They told me that this same stalker has been doing this exact same thing to them for years. They then told me that he has been actually commenting on a lot of these videos and I checked and I found out at that point, which kind of startled me, he's been leaving literally hundreds of comments a day on these videos from his different accounts that he has. And with that having been said, I'm going to ask you right now, please hit the thumbs up. It will really help out in YouTube's algorithm. It will help spread awareness to what really goes on online. And let's begin. <laughs> 2011 and 2012 came and went without any contact from Andrew. Then in 2013, I got a single long email. It's November, getting towards the holiday season again, which are usually when his blow-ups occur. My gran had died recently, so I used that as a test to remind him that historically this didn't end well. My gran died recently. You'll probably need that information to properly harass my family this time. To which he replied, Subject, R.E. Unsolicitations. I am so sorry to hear this, Gary. Sad face. This must be a difficult time. I also, for what it's worth, reiterate my apology for the debacle in 2008-2009. There was no excuse for my ugly behavior. It was a collection of very serious mistakes emanating from a very immature mind. And I was too proud and arrogant to see that for a long time. I concluded, incorrectly, Gary and Pipe Debucker are bullying me about something very sensitive. It's the school playground all over again. And then, without pausing to allow you to deny involvement, or the alcohol and energy drinks to wear off, or to get some sleep, or realizing the disgustingness of what I was actually saying, chose to act in an outrageous manner that warranted the steps you took. It wasn't fun coming under all of the abuse, but it was self-inflicted. You told me at the time that I would regret it, and for a number of years I have regretted not your retaliation, but how far into the sewer I lowered myself. No one in your family will be harassed or contacted by me under any circumstances. Of that, you can be assured. I was a very angry, bitter person at that time. I am now extremely cautious about how I deal with others. Again, I am sorry for your loss and won't send you any more unsolicited comments. I also apologize for any upset my monologue may have caused, sad face. Take care. I hadn't heard from him for a long time, so maybe he had spent the last two years growing and done some real thinking, got some real help. He had apologized before and then done the exact same thing shortly afterwards, but this seemed different. It wasn't wrapping a thread. He wasn't suggesting that any of it was my own fault. He took the blame completely. So good on him. Maybe he's fixed. Maybe not. Subject. Kind of crap. Power abusing mods. Am I correct in assuming back in 2008, when you said I was banned for life, that you meant life? And this still applies? Well, I hate to break it to you, but I have been back with the name Kaidna for several months and posted 100 plus times. Read that name backwards. Not exactly NSA-worthy cipher, is it? Your genius mods missed that. Also, they've been deleting important threads in the RC, some of which was intended for you, including ideas on how to make the forums pay for themselves. Standard practice? Oh, and they abuse their power pretty relentlessly, banning people who offend their friends, etc. You may need some new mods. Happy New Year. He had joined our forums again and got banned and was now arguing with one of our moderators. He had emailed me to tip me off about the moderators deleting his threads in the refugee camp, a special forum for banned people to appeal their bans. Subject, CC of RC message to Crap Tasket. Sending to you before he gets opportunity to delete it from RC. Crap Tasket, why are you trying to sterilize that thread of all debate? 
I essentially won the argument on my fucking own. As the other people, expose the same opinions as me, seemed to have got bored and wandered off. Most people were pretty reasonable about this debate, putting up their arguments, backing them up, etc. Apart from two key people, Helix Snake and Hexpunk, who decided they couldn't have my side win, so decided to become abusive. I tried to report the abuse, was ignored, so retaliated in kind. Then I got a seven-day ban from Megafan. Lol, what's the point in that? Debate means both sides get equal share of the floor, and if one side starts winning, it's accepted graciously. Why have debate if only one side is permitted an opinion? If you're that biased, you shouldn't be a mod. In all honesty, can you see me attack anyone in that thread without having been attacked first? If mods had done their jobs properly and responded to my flame reports, I wouldn't have taken things into my own hands like that. Hopefully, you see past the fact this information is coming from me and see it as potentially symptomatic of something that's gone wrong on the forums. I replied to this, telling him he was permabanned from the forums for a reason and asked him not to rejoin, not to email again. Subject, R-E-C-C -C of R-C, message to Craptasket. You are a fool and an arrogant, complacent one at that. No wonder you're getting DDoS left, right, and center. You actively make people dislike you. I try to help, and you throw it back in my face, even suggesting in the RC ways to make the forums pay for themselves. I even defended you on your shifty basement dweller infested forum against people saying your success was all due to luck. Well, fuck you. I'll make as many alts as I want. Try and stop me. Maybe I'll participate in the DDoSing too. P.S. Russ looks like shite. Fluky cunt. Oh, and yeah, you should pay 75% tax. The thread dickheads were right on that count. Horrible abrasive tit. This is a recurring theme of Andrew's. He has a lot of trouble with rejection, with the word no. Again, I don't think that this can be blamed on Asperger's. I'm sure even people with Asperger's realize that acting out like this pretty much guarantees that they'll never get what they want. Not only just this time, this is upbringing or lack of. I replied, yup, that's the Andy we remember. Please cease contact with me. Please leave our forums and blogs alone. Gary, you act like a cock end. Then wonder why people respond badly. My dad has the exact same bad fucking habit. And now he's preparing for a lonely old age, essentially ostracized from his whole family. If you had nothing positive, slash non-confrontational to say, why bother replying in the first place? Politeness costs nothing. I was only trying to be helpful for fuck's sake. No need for, no one cares what you say. This is the first time he mentioned his dad, if I remember correctly. Andrew blames everyone else for his situation. His mom, his stepdad, the English, the French, feminists, Jews, Scousers, Brummies, but most of all, his dad. This is his most fundamental problem. It's why the first email I received from him where he accepted blame was so significant. Why I thought he might have turned the corner. I replied, I thought you were finished with this stupid crap. Making a fool of yourself on the internet? Making me hate you even more? What do you think is the best thing that can come from it? It seems like better things could be achieved by turning off your computer and stopping caring. This is a lose-lose for all of us. Only reason I contacted you was to report the dumb, destructive behavior of your mods. Otherwise, I would have continued keeping clear. But apparently, you're still so butthurt from 2008 that you refuse to accept anything from me, regardless of value. Fine, so be it. I can forget grudges in an instant. Some people need to hold on to them forever. So I thought I'd clue him into why I was butthurt. I appreciate that from his point of view, my granddad wasn't a person. He was a name, a photo. He maybe couldn't comprehend what he did. I'm sure you would hold a grudge too if I made a Facebook profile of your dead granddad, poked your sisters with it, made jokes about child abuse with it, and you had to watch your mom and sisters cry because of it. My granddad lived for 78 years. I knew him all of my life. He was a bricklayer who worked all over the world. He had five kids. He took me boxing when I was nine. He bought me a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles costume when I was seven. 
And when I think of his funeral, I just remember the abusive Facebook profile taunting his death. That's why I hold a grudge. Yes, I fucked up, I know. But do you know why I did? No, and you don't care either. You only see your side of things. Did you ever stop just once to ask, why did he do this? What could motivate someone to go so low? And why wasn't your mom shielded from this? She should never have been shown that. Did it also never occur to you once that perhaps I was inundating you with ideas, tips, suggestions, etc.? was as a way to try undoing the damage. It was impossible to go back in time and stop the fiasco from happening. But maybe there was a way to try and compensate somehow. Sad face. I do really think that he regrets what he did. I think he regrets it enough to have stopped contacting me for two years. But I don't believe he regrets it enough to stop him from doing the exact same thing again. Or worse. If it's any other additional consolation, you have those fond memories of him, and I have nothing. No fond memories, not of family or anything else. Just pain, darkness, and overwhelming desire for revenge. You'd be doing me a favor if you had me whacked. Tell me to go to a specific place, anywhere in the UK, where you can have someone carry out the hit. I don't care anymore, and you'd be saving a fucking lot of lives down the road. You won, Gary! A long time ago! Don't tell anyone I offered this. Once you do, you lose the option and become a prime suspect. You asked what is there to gain? What is the best thing to come of this? You get to say to your mom and sisters, Remember that guy? Well, he got what was coming to him. It was unpleasant. What else do you get? Knowing I won't be able to do these things I'm going to do. Only a bullet in my head can stop me. And suicide is not an option. Not unless I could take a few billion random mooks with me. What do I get? That's not for you to worry about. Isn't that what you want? Revenge? You'd feel better, wouldn't you? And if you got a pro, you'd get away with it. Let's sort it out. You could get someone in Birmingham to do it for 10,000, I'd bet. Yeah, he offered to let me have him killed. Jesus. Or I guess I could walk away and never contact you again. You'd never get your revenge. You'd never say to your sisters and mum, that monster is fucking dead. Also, lying about me, begging for mercy, etc. to make them feel even better. And you'd always be wondering, what did he mean? What things is he going to do? How? When? Don't worry. Nothing is against you or yours, just in general. You have the means to stop it. To be a hero! The police? Sykes? <laughs> Law. Once, three burly police were stood in my living room telling me, You can't say things like this by email. You might scare someone. I nodded politely, and they fucked off. They just increased my determination. No one speaks down to me, nor police, or fucking God himself. If the universe didn't want me to one day commit an atrocity, a bloodbath, or many, then maybe it wouldn't have fucking tortured me nonstop for almost four ducking decades. And my comments are non-specific to avoid arrest or rubber rooms, lol. I won't change my mind. Only death will stop me. You are one of the few people who I think knows what I'm capable of. Admit it. You want me dead. Let me help. Admit it! Also, don't worry. No one on my side would try to retaliate. They let my kid's sister be murdered. So they'll stand by and let it happen to me too. If you don't want to mess about with guns, knives, or hitmen, then you or Craig could always drive into me really fast. We could make it look like an accident. I won't suicide, but I won't make much of an effort to escape execution by your hands or proxies on your behalf. I could also delete the contents of sent folder the night before and eliminate any other paper trail. Fuck. You could make a Unity player game that involves torturing or killing me. Do something. How can you be content with, I have a grudge, see ya. What do you want? 
Yowzers. You're right. I would hold a grudge, and the guilty party may face inconveniences. I did not realize that it had such a profound effect. Do you mind if I make an alt, but something worded in your honor? Subject. Few questions. One. Why did you post about your granddad on your blog when he died? At the time, you even said, Someone will probably use this against me. If I hadn't been the one, I think you know damn well someone else would have been. Doesn't this make it partly your fault? Why share every private detail with the public anyway? People are cunts. Two, why didn't you go to the police? Hezzy? Lol, that got autocorrected to Jesus. Thought you had a pretty strong case. Why don't you go now? Three, why did I make the profile? I thought you and Pipo de Booker were in some kind of union against me. He was writing seriously insulting shit about me on your blog. Why did I poke your sisters? I asked them to try and talk to you on my behalf about the Pipo thing. They just laughed and told me to go fuck myself, as did your ex. Sorry, but if someone starts a fight with me, I'll finish it. And that's what it looked like was happening. Also, I almost never start fights. Maybe you were one of the bullies on the school playground, right? But I was one of the victims, and it wasn't bullying. It was fucking torture! I'm still affected more than 25 years on. It's fucking affected every facet of my life and personality. And if I ever spaz one day and go on a killing spree or something, that'll be at the fucking core of it! Four, how fucking stupid and selfish was it to show your mum a completely innocent party? Don't blame me for that. I had no beef with her whatsoever. Five, sorry your sisters cried. But they should have had a less dismissive attitude about Pipo de Booker and you apparently conspiring against me. I politely requested their help, and they barfed it back up in my face. 6. Why think of the profile instead of the funeral? Are you not in control of your own mind? Forget the stupid fucking profile. It was almost six years ago. Think about the good things about your granddad. The way he would have wanted to be remembered. Do I hold a grudge? I did for a few months, in 2008-2009, then forgot about it and chose to see positive stuff about you, your works, and FPS. However, I still don't understand why you sided with Pipo de Booker, letting him post deeply offensive shit while blocking me! For me, it was the school playground again. Not trying to start anything, just curious. I guess I must have really pissed you off by mocking your choice of phones. The fucking iPhone again. Subject. Last email. I wrote that last big email with the questions just now, not because I want anything from you, but to underscore your part in all this, as well as the futility of holding grudges. They eat you up inside, gnawing away at your soul until there's nothing left, making you age before your time. Trust me, I know, but the damage is done for me. It's too late. Don't make my mistake. Don't let your kids even get a whiff of that kind of toxic negativity. Take care, man. Andy. Sorry about sneaking back onto forums like that. I was lurking and saw a thread I couldn't resist barging into. But evidently, me and forums do not go together. It always goes badly wrong. So, sorry. I'll leave your forums and blogs alone. After all of this, mentions of suicides and mass killings, I felt like I had to do something. It annoys me in a way. I'm a game developer, I made a computer game, and now I'm a fucking babysitter and social worker? But I had to do something. If something happened and I could have prevented it, I needed to let someone know. So I put on my detective hat and found his mom on Facebook. I sent her a message. Hi, you don't know me, but I believe I know your son, Andrew, and I'm quite worried about him. He has started emailing me a lot again. He did it a few years ago, which peaked with him creating a Facebook profile of my recently deceased granddad and aggravating my sisters with it. Some of the recent emails are quite dark, suicidal thoughts and talk of taking as many people with him as possible. He has spoke of you before and that you help calm him down. So I'm letting you know instead of going to the police or something. 
because I'm sure you understand him better than most. Gary. She replied positively, thanked me for notifying her, asked me to hold off reporting him to the police. So I felt like I had done my duty. I'd handed off responsibility and I could sleep well in that knowledge. Subject, paying to reduce ban times. Did you see my post about that on the RC that the mods deleted? I think it could earn money to help pay the hosting bills for the forums. You have a right to see it, even if you dismiss it as crap. Want me to resend? He sent about 20 emails around this time. Nothing abusive, advice, questions. I didn't reply to any of them. Subject, Gary Gay Man. Isn't this where you normally start posting lots of abusive, one-sided shit about me on all your crappy sites so your gay little 12-year-old fanboys can attack me without me having a chance to have my say due to being blocked? That's what happened with the iPhone shit. And that's why I felt perfectly justified in the Granddad Saga. If you want to go for round two, let's do it. But this time, I know where you fucking work. And you're so thick, you don't keep things like addresses secret. Just bear that in mind. I bet you never once bothered to ask yourself what you'd done to cause that. No, you're too fucking arrogant for that. Like I said in 2008, you're a one-hit wonder. Rust hasn't surpassed Gmod, and at this rate, it's going to be remembered as a failure, riddled with hackers and bugs. I knew you'd fuck it up. Considering how arrogant and stupid you are, even by English standards, hell, even by West Midland standards, never listening to advice, no matter how good it is. Also, there's a record of you stating you hating me from your previous emails, which has already been forwarded, so if anything happens to me, you'll be suspect number one. All I can learn from you now is how not to do things, and quite frankly, they're such rookie errors, I wouldn't make them in the first place. Dumb English cunt. No wonder everyone hates you lot. I'd laugh so hard if you scum suffered a 9-11 type situation. Ideally, thousands of times worse. Maybe a bio attack or something. Subject. Stop. Now. So, there is a record of you speaking to my mom. That info only comes from private detectives or something, right? There is no way you could have found her surname and a link to me using online means only. Clearly someone, somewhere, has been paid, and most likely broken laws too. And there is also a record of you recently stating you hate me, and articulating how enraged you still are by 2008. Scary. So if anything happens to me or my relatives, all this means you might also know their address, or even my address. This is quite threatening, G-Man. In 2008, that shit with your family was entirely offline. No laws were broken in finding that info. They were all in your friends list. So, you've either paid someone to do something illegal, or done it yourself to get that private data. How should I process these facts? Knowing you and your total disregard for other people's privacy, and your god complex, or whatever the fuck it is that you got from your forums, you'll probably do something stupid. I expect an answer to this, otherwise, I'm gonna think the very worst. I don't want this to escalate, but it will if you don't act humbly and rationally for once in your whole life. P.S. I just wrote a similar message to the unsolicited message my mom got from you to my mom's name. But Firefox crashed before I had the chance to send it. Count yourself lucky. I won't rewrite it. For now. P.P.S. Any ideas for a hilarious Unity 3D game about people from the Walsall? I'd prefer to develop something else though. PPPS. If this email is too complicated for you, too many syllables, etc., then run it by your lawyer or someone else with a fucking clue. This needs to stop now, and you have made it so much worse by dragging my family into it. It seems that his mom finally got around to talking to him. Instead of calming him down, it had the opposite reaction. It has created paranoia. Maybe it was a bad move. Subject, dark thoughts. If you thought that was aimed at you, by the way, it wasn't, none of it. Maybe that's why you thought it was acceptable to bother my mother. But why would I want to get the cheap slosh that passes for English working class blood on my precious skin or clothes 
or die in the process. No, it was more of a generalized statement. I'm not interested in you or your family. Why destroy my own life for a handful of Wes Midlanders? Oh, wait. That was more of a Newcastle accent, wasn't it? Nah, who cares? They all sound retarded. But good luck telling the police I'm planning to one day do to the English what Hitler did to the Jews. Even if it takes decades of hard work, you'll be laughed out of the station. No one will take it seriously. Until it's too late. Hell, they're not even particularly unusual thoughts. Everyone dislikes you lot. I'll be doing the world a favor. But more likely than not, some foreign power, the EU, the Russians, or some terrorist group, will have long done it before I get the chance. I am actually more worried about what you might do to me. We all know how irrational and unpredictable you limeys are. Mind you, you're also a bunch of pussified cowards. All mouth. If you tell the police I have threatened you or your family, you will be lying. Where's the proof? Not once have I threatened you with violence. No. The goal is your whole worthless fucking nationality. All 50 million plus of you. I'll have plenty of allies along the way to help. And what's even more wonderful, it sounds so ridiculous that no one will even try to stop me. <laughs> Tell my mom. She already knows. But luckily for me, and all of the enemies of the subhuman limey infestation, she doesn't take it remotely seriously. I win. You owe me and my mother apologies. Your beer is disgusting. Good thing I have some nice foreign beer here. The only good thing about your floating turds in the North Sea, sorry, island, is the foreign things. I'd totally forgotten about all that shit, and then you go and stupidly reopen all the old wounds. Okay, now it's my turn to be the bully. Have you seen little homo child molesting cunt? How many vids I've posted on now? And the fun is just beginning. Why should I ever stop lashing out at you after 2008 and now 2014? At this point, he started posting angry ranting comments on every popular Gmod and Rust video he could find on YouTube. Subject Sarah is an obese minga, even by English standards. Yet, that's the best you can do? Even though you already had one million plus pounds when you met? You essentially bought her. Fucking loser. I hate you so much. He forwarded an email he had sent to his mom. Subject. Forward. The gloves are off now. Holy war commences. Sent on Facebook. He contacts you, and you defend him against me? Then I contact her, and insult him and his sister as much as possible. Only fair. No doubt you'll both defend them again. Other people are always right. Andrew is always wrong. You've ruined my ability to trust other human beings, by the way. My dad, too. Too late to help me now. My life will end badly, either in my bloodshed and or the bloodshed of many, 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 many other people. You are all to blame. All I needed was love, support, understanding, compassion, some good luck. But I didn't get one. Not one fucking iota of that. In almost 38 years. Not even during my formative years. Well done. Hello, Mrs. Newman. Do you know what I am? 2008. Familiar now. I didn't want you to see any of those comments. They were for your disgusting shit of a son. And his disgusting shit of an elder sister. And I am sorry you were exposed to those comments. They were not for your eyes or ears. It just shows how selfish your children are, I suppose. They should have known better than to allow you to see those comments. Well, Gary is determined to provoke me again, just as he did in 2008. He is sending insulting messages to my mother, who he tracked down with private detectives, and by bribing a former forum moderator who is a corrupt policeman. He is attacking me on his website, and planning to attack me on his blog. And most likely on his Twitter, too. Well... I will not be bullied by him again, as I was in 2008, which forced my retaliation, which unfortunately you were exposed to. This time, I will retaliate much, much, much 
worse than in 2008. So I strongly suggest you tell your son to walk off a cliff. Or failing that, to apologize to my mother for contacting her to shit talk me. And apologize to me and forget about any plans he has to cause me further problems. If he insists on continuing to bully me, he will be opening the gates of hell. And he will never recover. I will retaliate to any further attacks and will never stop. It will cause mayhem for your family. Let's not go down this reckless path. I hope that you can see the logic in what I'm saying, and you tell your wayward, imbecile, cretin of a son to behave himself. I have tried being tolerant and patient, but he refuses to listen to reason. Maybe you can talk sense into him before all hell breaks loose. I am sorry again that you were exposed to my negative comments in 2008. Gary is very good at provoking the worst in people. Andrew. As far as I know, he never actually sent this message. Subject, why do so many people hate you? Why? They're all in the wrong? Or maybe you are doing something wrong? Just a thought. Subject, formal warning to desist contacting my family. They all hate you, Newman, and want nothing to do with you. The only one who is willing to listen is me. If you contact anyone who is remotely related to me again, they will tell me, and I will contact the police. Alternatively, I will contact your family online in the worst ways possible. You have been warned. If you have anything to say, you can say it to me. I do not live with my parents, and they do not run my life. Say it to me! I am also about 1,000 times smarter than they will ever be. They do not calm me down, as you asserted. You have kicked a hornet's nest by contacting my mother in that unsolicited way. Take this as an official warning. You should be happy that I haven't been able to play Gmod, which I paid for twice since 2008, thanks to you installing a Trojan that targets me specifically. No doubt there is one in Rust too. How much more do you need to victimize me? I spend good money on Gmod, but can't play it because it'll detect me through my IP then proceed to wipe my hard disk, or whatever the hell sneaky thing you did back then. Bet you never removed it either. It's a total piece of piss to implement, so why should I believe otherwise? Do you have any idea how rude it is to ignore people? Okay, not now as it's 3am, but before when it was a civilized hour. This is probably another reason people hate you. You want me to calm down? Then answer my questions and allay my fears. Then I'll fuck off forever, okay? Sleep is for the weak. We have stuff to discuss. All this shit's given me a headache. You're probably happy now. Subject, future advice. Don't worry, there won't be any more. You've made me hate you again. Guess it's mutual now. P.S. When I'm richer than you, you'll never hear the end of it. I will hire people to drive around your neighborhood, yelling into a bullhorn. Reminding you of my financial supremacy. This is the main reason of many I am not a physical threat to you, so I can eventually gloat. I should be working on my game, but you're distracting me with all this shit. You are Steve Jobs, and I am Bill Gates. Bill Gates crushed Steve Jobs. Why are you English such two-faced, backstabbing, immoral, irrational, unreliable, dishonest cunts? Is it something genetic, or maybe cultural, or both? I don't get it. Also, what is this lie about? Fair play. You don't do that. You not only kick people when they're down, you cover them with petrol, then throw the match. How is it you never got punished for anything or have to pay any price? As a nationality, you always land on your two feet. Any other group would long have starved to death or been conquered even after making only a fraction of your mistakes. Maybe it's what happens when your ruling elites are all devil-worshipping, funny, handshake, Illuminati types. Why are you limeys, such insufferable snobs? Anyway, you deserve 7-7, seven, seven, and hopefully the next one is nuclear, and in multiple cities. Notice, I haven't attacked any of your relatives. You're welcome. How do you feel that your country is on the edge of a civil war? What's your favorite color, smiley face? So I woke up to all these emails, and a bunch more. I came to a realization. 
I'm making this hard for both of us. This is going to keep repeating and repeating. How I'm handling it isn't going to stop it. Andrew isn't going to change on his own. Maybe he needs a friend. Maybe he needs someone to tell him when he's fucking up. Someone he respects. Andrew is nearly 40. That means his parents have got to be in their 60s or 70s. What a fucking burden for them to have to deal with him like he's 12 years old. The more I thought about it, the more I felt sorry for them. Maybe I can make their lives easier, better. Maybe I can make Andrew's life better, easier. Maybe I can make the situation better by being Andrew's friend. Find out how that worked out in part four. I can't wait to see you in our next chapter, so make sure you're subscribed and have notifications turned on. And if you enjoyed this, please hit the thumbs up. It really helps out in YouTube's algorithm. And let me know what you think of this whole situation in the comments below. But be warned, whatever you say, I guarantee you the stalker will actually read it. He, he reads every single comment.